So in Empty City, <clears throat> I love that song. I actually got to play it at Gorg with Carrie and Gary, which was awesome. That's fun. <laughs> And uh, it's such a tricky song. Mm. The all the little winding parts. Da, 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 it's it's so bluesy, chromatic. You know, it's mm. somewhere between like weird and normal rock. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to hear more about that song. Well, Kerry would know better than I. But as, as far as I know, I mean that all those guitar lines are completely Ray. Uh, yeah. The the changes like on the F goes to the F sharp, ends up on G. I guess that sort of transition through. Uh, those are all done by Ray, but obviously the the smoothness of it is through practicing it <laughs> as a band, you know. And Ray and I would play that those particular things a, a lot to, you know, make it right. Mm. Uh, but that's that's my recollection of that, care. Yeah. But so you're saying on the on the recorded on the album version that's Ray playing the guitar parts? Um, no, I think I did them. No, all. you're playing. You are playing. Yeah, like the, the the acoustic guitar duet towards the beginning. That's the two of us. That's you, the right? two of us, and that's really my that's, only complaint. That's, so that's you know, my that only is. complaint of this mix and our original mix too is that like the lead line, ba da 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 doesn't come out well enough and especially after like the band transition and it all comes back tumbling towards the end and we're going out and it comes in again da -da -da, and you can't hear the notes it's all covered up by weathers crashing through <laughs> but that's really my only complaint kerry the, the the vocals are all your parts are they not yes i do believe yeah. so yeah, I think I was working with the Revox, bouncing them, putting the vocal lines together downstairs while we were recording upstairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what about uh, the uh, the saxes? Uh, I know, Mike, you wanted to ask about that, but... Well, it's it's violin and sax in harmony, right? Those those two parts. Yeah. All that stuff. So I can't you're, playing play all, that. you're playing alto on the bottom and he's playing violin on top? Yeah, I think I, I think it's double tracked. Uh, um, I think I'm playing the harmony uh, as well as with the violin. Correct. Yeah. So it's you know there, uh, there's there's two, you know, the harmony on, on the saxes, but it's doubled by the violin. Yeah. I mean they allowed that, me to that, al allowed my my uh, you know my four notes that I could play to to uh, <laughs> to to actually it, get recorded. Uh, it's a, but no, it's, it's a, a it's wonderful a, uh, it's a wonderful texture. Yeah, and, yes, uh, isn't it? and it's probably a, br a brother thing, but the the time is so tight. I mean, the the, the way you're moving together on those lines yeah. is just breathtaking. Well, and, not to uh, mention Derek's vocals. I mean, he is belting it out in that song. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, on the choruses, yeah. Well, this, yeah, uh, that's high, yeah. isn't it? It's up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I'll, I'll tell you, this I'll, this I'll, album. I mean, it's it's like I, when I got this album, it was like the, one of the first albums I got as a fan because. The new album when I became a fan was Power and the Glory, and then I got Freehand, and I love that. And then I got Interview, and it, the thing, you know, first of all, just the power of that song hitting, and then the strength of the high note in the in the vocal melody. Long time. As soon as that hit, I felt like I was I could just rest. I'm in the hands of masters, you know. It's 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 so powerful, and it's and the same thing on this song. But I guess that's just about you guys being uh, roadworthy at the time, you know. It, it, you just in such fighting trim yeah I, that's i think that's what we were i mean uh, we as as i said earlier i think we we become very very tight you know musicians and and we come up, come off our sort of uh best and, and biggest album if you like um touring north america and europe and i i really you know we were we were on form um again i think you know that's when when you showed us a video of ray I hadn't seen that, by the way, Anthony, and, and thanks for showing us that, that because, you know, um, it's, nice it's just see. it's so sad that Ray's not with us here. Mm. Uh, generally, <laughs> um, sorry. No. Um, but you know, uh, it was yeah. you know, we were tight. 
we were and and uh, and it's good that you grabbed Ray, <coughs> saying the the very same thing that we all thought that that we were on form, and and uh, you know it's it's something which I think we're all proud of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think yeah. we learned from that too, didn't we? We wanted to always, from then on, go to the studio in top form because obviously that's how you get your best performances. Yeah, yeah. There were there were times. I, I guess um, I, I'll take it away from certain this album interview where, I mean, me for me personally, uh, in the studio, I, I remember the missing piece when we went to Hill Varenbeck. I hated that. I, I really just, I, I couldn't believe how bad it was. This is me personally. I, I just, those three weeks in, in Holland, you know, in the countryside, I honestly, I couldn't <laughs> wait to get back and into civilization. I don't know anyone else, but man, what a horrible experience that was. <laughs> Why did You're we talk about my honeymoon? Yeah, <laughs> was it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh God! Sorry, yeah, we shared a show. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. Is, is, that why, is that why we went? That's why you didn't enjoy yourself because I was having such a good time. <laughs> oh man, it was the middle of nowhere in in, in uh, yeah, Holland. Was... And, oh God Almighty! Why did we go there? And... Was it because had had Genesis been there? Yeah, I think that you know, Genesis had a big hit there, and so we said, right. "Well, we can get a big hit there too." You're right. <laughs> right. We, we arrived in the middle of nowhere in this flat, horrible you know place where we could. I was completely out of place. I mean, you know, I was like a goldfish, mm -hmm. you know, flapping around on on the, on the counter. You know, uh, log cabins, weren't um, they? So that's you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> log cabins. You know. Uh, and I live in, in Manhattan, so that's not exactly my style. So, yeah. anyway, <laughs> enough said about that. Until that remix comes out, well, then we can revisit. Actually, yeah, it's, that's that's actually. I think it's been done. I've heard some, and actually, it's very good. I'm I'm really excited to hear that remix because yeah. that's a very strange sounding. It album. sounds very thin, uh, doesn't I, it? I don't know what what the uh, what the mix has sounded like in the studio while you were there. But uh, it, it definitely the original mix on Missing Pieces is odd. So I'm, I'm very, very curious to hear where Stephen goes with that. I remember that we wanted well, to have it, it, have it, it sound brighter, brighter. Sorry, John, go on. There was a false bottom end in the studio. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. That's a yeah, so very when we brought... accusation there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't hurt Genesis. I'm not then, talking about it? your honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Although it could be construed that you were. <laughs> Would I? <laughs> we, were, we were so well rehearsed, though, for Missing Peace. We, we'd taken the, the uh, side to the album actually on tour. Uh, in America before recording it so it was like yep. and the great thing about it what I enjoyed about it was we we set up um, in a semicircle uh, and the drums were on a riser and it was played live do you remember guys yeah mm. yeah it's true <laughs> so I mean I, yeah. I regard that as as being really tight because we all knew exactly what you know you, you play a thing for six weeks on tour and you come back tight the only time i saw you live was on that tour and it was uh, very exciting to hear those uh, what became side two of missing peace to hear that music live premiered for the first time i was uh, and it was amazing that was uh, still one of the best shows i've ever seen by far Thank you. But coming out of interview, uh, that then you went on to do uh, what the, the tour that resulted in, in playing the fool. That was the interview tour uh, that that's documented on playing the fool, which is, I think, maybe the the most rocking, powerful, progressive rock album ever. You know, it's 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 an an amazing document. 
which is essentially an outgrowth of the interview period. It's all kind of the same thing. So you come into interview uh, well seasoned from the road, and then you go out and do that. It, uh, it's just an amazing period in your career. Uh, John, what, what are your uh, reflections of playing that music live on the road? Oh, uh, well, it, it was always exciting, <laughs> challenging, uh, fun. Um, I, I love touring. I always did and loved yeah. the uh, playing live, you know, um, I just used to enjoy every yeah. single night getting up there and doing it. And I think we all did at that mm. particular period. Um, you can hear it. You can, well, you could certainly see it, you know, uh, and the, the band were so happy to be playing. You know, I, I loved yes. the whole, the whole thing. John on the, uh, on the new YouTube video of the song interview with the remix, uh, I think during the, the ragtime piano part, it, you're singing into the microphone. I thought it was Carrie uh, singing on the album, but I'm curious, like, it was that your vocal there? Yeah, it was. I got the job. I don't oh, know how, okay. and I don't know why. <laughs> I think it was. It was you're, well, you're portraying it, an interviewer in that section. And, uh, yeah, so an idiot. There. It's perfect. It's the. Yeah. It's the. Yeah. Here's here's the group idiot. <laughs> and can you see? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, thank God we had we had Mr. Pogwash there on stage as well. I tell you, John, yeah. you you your 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 presence on stage and personally you know, off stage and here as well. Your presence was so important for the band. I mean, you know, you were you, your your character. Your no, it was, I'm telling you that you know it, it was it was part of what who we were. And yeah. and you, you you know, there's not many drummers. Who were stars, and you were a star drummer. You weren't behind, just behind the kit. You were, you were. People knew who Pugwash was, you know, in the band, and that's true. I'm not. I, I, I'm telling you, you know, not to your face, but to a little window. But honestly, you, you, it was, it was so good to see and hear you on stage with all of us here. You know, yeah. it was just uh, so much fun. Oh, I have to say, I, I've posted several videos with John, and the comments are always glowing. It's people saying. John's the best, uh, most underrecognized drummer uh, in in the whole you know genre of whatever you call prog. Uh, people t saying that John inspired them to play the drums. They love watching him. They remember him in concert. Like there's everyone is revered in different ways, but John with like just his steady playing and keeping the train moving. And uh, his little stand-up acts, you know, on stage, <laughs> making people laugh and entertaining people. Like, I think that was a big part of Gentle Giants, like, entertainment value. And you weren't just a band who played complex music. You actually entertained people. And uh, I have spoke, my dad, you know, I saw you guys several times. And I've spoken to a lot of people who attended uh, concerts where you opened. And... Uh, I know one of you were saying, oh, Tall loved when we opened. Oh, I think it was actually Ray uh, in our last interview. Um, mm -hmm. But I often wonder, based on the comments you know, f f that I've heard, if the bands were often jealous of your <laughs> the way that you could prime up the audience, because it seems like you guys really riled people up. And John, you were a major part of that, for sure. <laughs> well, it's very kind of you to say so, but uh, every band's got an idiot. And I, I'm it. <laughs> oh, somebody's phone. The, you know, one, you, I think the, you've been one, very the kind. Band, I think I think the band uh, could not only play, but we could entertain as well. Um, and and that was that was a big big Hello. part of what we who we were. Uh, okay, John's got a yeah, call, so you know, I'm not sure if we should yeah. interrupt him here. <laughs> okay, okay let's keep quiet here. He was okay, sweetheart. <laughs> Bye. I'm sorry. Bye. I thought Toodles. I thought Carol was okay, but she's not. She's out in the garden, so the phone ring. 
and it was somebody saying, "Yes, I got the message. <laughs> the dance class is cancelled." <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I haven't changed. And this is what it was like on stage. <laughs> uh, so, th so now you now you know how we all were on stage. Yeah, I mean there was a dynamic to the band, wasn't there? And, you know that's that comes out. There we are. Yeah. No, that's. I think that's that comes to you know John. Of course, was in a, in a band. You know, a couple of several bands before we all got together. You know, so or it was always I, and we all were. So we we all learn that it wasn't just playing. It was Stagecraft. it was when you get on stage, you play as well as you can, but you also try to hopefully entertain. And that's you know we we smiled on stage. We liked each other playing, and we liked each other on stage, and 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 we we liked to see the audience smile. I think rather than you know fold their arms and be impressed with the manuscripts in their arms. You know, so uh, you know, that was part, Taking notes. part and parcel of who we were. I think the only band... What was that uh, you played you there, know. Kerry? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, do a thesis on, on each other. No, I think the only band that was... Uh, you know, I think Tull were, were great because they were great on their own. I think the only... And I'm going to get lots of... Uh, um, Mm. Uh, uh, I don't know bla blaspheming uh, emails or texts from this. The ba one band that was was um, threatened by us was Yes, mm. um, and I know those guys very well. And and you know I know G G I mean we were, I think they were a little afraid of how how well we do. And and I just remember when we played with them, we toured with them, how little room we had, <laughs> and how little how many lights we'd have. <laughs> and you remember those those shows? I oh, mean, yeah. you know, they were we were going. We were almost not on stage at one point. You know, we were almost in the audience. You know, uh, <laughs> I think they were um, a little. Uh, you know, obviously I know them very well, uh, but but uh, you know, so I, I mean after the event, but I think they were threatened. I think Gaz, you had a couple of run-ins with <laughs> with a couple of guys at some point. It was Steve Howe, I think. Uh, um, no, and my only re interaction with Steve Howe was way after Giant. Oh, was it yeah, after? Okay. A long time after that. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, it was Well, they, they never actually me. spoke to but, us. John Anderson did no. once. I met, uh, oh, that was in the, in the <laughs> afternoon, after they'd, he'd taken his afternoon nap before the gig. Yeah. And he was coming down yeah, in yeah. the elevator. And we all piled in, and he was there, and he was just sort of just coming out of a dream state, I think, isn't it? Oh, that's well, all, no. That's, we, no, we didn't no, have any interaction with them, did we? <laughs> I, no, no I the didn't. only one uh, during that... Uh, was Rick. Sorry, John. The, the only one uh, during that, that was a relayer tour, was Patrick Moraz. And Patrick was very friendly to us. I mean, he loved, I mean, Kerry, he was a big fan of yours, uh, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Because I, he told me that he'd spoken to you, you know, when when we were on, you know, we were playing, you know, and, and he was a big fan, yeah. you know. He, he loved. I mean, he was the only one that would would be friendly, but generally they would kind of like, you know, not not be around and, and be you know be uh, uh, friends at per se. And generally, when bands would play together, you know, you'd go to their dressing room, and say nice gig, and have a drink with them. You know, there was was never any of that when we toured with them. But no, you hang he... with uh, with Tall on the road. Yeah. Oh yeah. They were great. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we remember, remember when we did um, when we when we did a three act tour with um, with Yes, and the Eagles were in the middle. We opened the show, yeah. then there was the Eagles, and then yes. The Eagles did not <laughs> like yeah. us. They were not very fond of us at all. Yeah. And I don't think the yeah, audience... That was the, that was the other, yeah. The, I don't think the audience took very well to a country and western band in between Gentle Giant and yes. <laughs> they died. Yeah. <laughs> And they hated us for it. They did, and they took the piss yeah, out of us. That's true. 
I, I think I think they had us kicked off. Go on, guys. Yeah, I think so. I was going to say, wasn't that the show where our luggage got lost or something, and we ended up playing on stage in our street clothes? And Derek, I think you said something to that effect on stage, like, I'm sorry, like, we're not dressed up or whatever. And then the Eagles came on and kind of poo-pooed that, didn't they? Didn't they have a go at uh, you saying that, as I recall? Something strange. He said, forgive us, like, we're wearing our jeans or whatever, but we didn't. We haven't got our clothes. It's like, yeah. He, he said, well, <laughs> well we, we've come on in our stage clothes, in our street clothes, which was a load of bollocks, because all those ripped denims and stuff were all in a flight case in the dressing room. Yeah. <laughs> to change out of ripped clothes to get into more ripped clothes. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the Eagles weren't, weren't, I mean, that's, yeah, they were the only ones. What probably the only band that really like, you know, uh, were, were 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 nasty to us. I mean, as opposed to ignoring us. I mean, they were, they, were, they didn't like us at all. I mean, you know, Don Henley and and those guys who were like, yeah, go away. You know, and, yeah, I think you're right, John. I think they they said we don't want this fucking band on the road. Okay, yeah, well, they, okay, they probably okay. they and, probably and paid. Was... They they probably paid to get on the tour. Probably, yeah. Um, aren't we supposed to be talking about interview? Yeah. I wanted to talk to you, Gary, about... Okay, so in on every Dell Giant album, there would usually be a guitar solo. Right. Because it wasn't the type of band that would that had guitar solos in every song. Thank and, God. Well, actually, there's two on this, because there's a very beautiful solo on Empty City where you're pretty much just stating the melody, but in a really soulful way, in an amazing tone. It, it sounds even better on the new mix. But the, the brutal solo on this record is on timing, oh. uh, which which is one of the best. Oh. I, don't, I don't know how you feel about that solo. I think it's amazing. It, it sounds incredible. Thank you. For, for one thing, but also your choice of notes is, is spectacular. Uh, uh, and that the grab. choice of notes was a process... <laughs> the choice of notes was a process of elimination, I think. Um <laughs> Like I say, oh Judy, God, Judy was there, and uh, I think I was alone upstairs in the big room at Ad Vision, having to put a last minute a solo on timing, which I could not get my head around playing on it. I couldn't. I I kept playing stuff, and I didn't. I hated it, and I I blew up a Fender Champ in the process doing it. Um, it just <laughs> it just stopped, and the smoke started coming out the back of it in the big room at AdVision and uh, I tried another amplifier and I I don't know thanks Mike that is nice but I, I'm not a fan of that solo it just uh, it's a it's just a I am of frustration I just <laughs> well I, I think the frustration is is evident might be what you know I not all music should be made under these circumstances <laughs> but I think that the frustration does feed into what makes that solo work it does sound like an explosion of yeah. something it's cathartic it's angry well, i it... think it must it must have been really hard for guys because the, the the chordal pattern i mean is is not i mean is so damn hard to to work around you know the, oh, uh, yeah the, the the yeah the vamp is bomb oh, yeah. Da, 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 yeah how did you guys how did you do that for god's thanks sake? guys another great solo <laughs> Um, <laughs> section. <laughs> well, that, well, was, that was the frustration. That was, that, was that was a frustration. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't work around it, and I just was trying anything. And uh, you know, there we it, are. It, it, trust me, it works. It really works. Well, thanks. Mm. I, I, I'm, I appreciate that because it's not one of my favourite giant moments for me. But is the, is the, is that you doing the the solo on empty city or that that is yeah, you, you right? mean it, da, 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 da. yeah yeah that's did, did you try improvising on that and 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 then decide that it was better to state the melody or or were you sort of uh uh assigned to play it that uh way? i don't think i was assigned i i think ray said well you know play the melody over this section yeah. and uh but make it yours kind of if you like you know and uh there you go and it's it's two guitars playing it 
as you oh. can tell, when they come down, you, they sort of split apart and play different. Oh, right, the yeah. last right. So they sort of diverge at the end, and and I, I liked, I still like that kind of loose kind of sound of guitars kind of wending different ways through something but uh but that's part of my plan i suppose so but uh but that's, no that's i was given solo. license I mean, that... to play whatever i would want on that um but it's such a nice line it's mm. like the, the whole thing about solos is playing the thing that's appropriate to the tune um mm. and that seemed the best approach to it for sure yeah it's just it's just Definitely. very sweet yeah. solo isn't it it sounds very yeah. sweet it, it suits suits the mood of the tune really well it is just the tune it just it you don't need to play any more than that you know you no it says plenty it says everything the actual tune so Okay, I've got a question that I need an answer to, Care, because I've given several answers to different people about who wrote something. And it, it's Mobile. I'm not, it's not on this album, I know. But who wrote Mobile, or the, the line at least? Right. Ray. It was me, it was me and Ray. It was me and Ray. Okay. Oh, okay. There you yeah. go. Because. Uh, I came up with this this thing and I brought it over to Ray, and so and we, we that ha, well, that would happen occasionally, you know. Even on yeah. this album, uh, I think um, another show. That's yours, uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 came, I came up idea. with that the crazy riff. I remember that guitar. And, you know, and I bring it to Ray, and, and yeah, on a guitar, and then Ray would like you know fine tune it, and then we bring it, carry, and then bring the whole band in. And I think mobile was the same kind of thing, um, mm. and then mm. Ray Ray would refine it. <laughs> And make it like audibly better. Uh, so that so it, that piece that that riff generated from your guitar work tapes because yeah, da, 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 da. yeah. I remember hearing those on under construction and that really uh, enhanced. You know, I always respected and admired you, but when I heard those guitar work tapes of yours, I just thought well, that's so cool and what a great way to generate material. So that well, we all, you know, we, yeah, we all had, had but, you know, but then then obviously the band got together and. Added their, you know, their ideas, but uh, you know that's what it would have. Generally, we'd all work apart, um, and then Kerry and, and and Ray and and then myself, obviously for lyric lyrically, would come together, mm -hmm. and then the band would eventually get together and work out the pieces. But for the most part, um, uh, you asked about mobile uh, guys. Uh, that was actually me, me first. And then I brought this little thing to Ray, and then Ray expanded on it and took it on to to get carry, and then we worked it well, out. Well, the, the reason that I ask <clears throat> is that the line -da 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 sounds so much someone? like it would have been written on a violin that for years I was convinced that Ray had written it, and then I'm sure, yeah. Care, at some gorg or other, you told me that you wrote that line. So I, I revised my 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 interview oh, must, technique forever, <laughs> telling people that you wrote this line because you so understood so well how to play a violin that you wrote a line that sounded perfect on violin. You, that, that's that's so not me, Gaz. <laughs> you blown my theory. I would never have said that. <laughs> I must have needed reassurance or something at the time. Well, that's okay. I, it, I mean, it, it goes with my original theory that it was perhaps thought of on a violin, but now Derek tells me it's on guitar. Uh, no, it's, it's 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 interesting how these these things, you know, you the memories, our memories of of how they how they all came together, they start blurring into each other. But for the most part, you know, as as we know, you know, it was either Kerry or Ray. Doing things apart, then we all get together and I uh, come in and 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 uh, you know get lyrical co ideas from the music, uh, and occasionally I'd come up with a little piece and you know bring it to Ray and, and then he'd make it sound like a piece of music that worked. Um, and then bring it, you know, <clears throat> I think together and then we all get together. I think that's a great illustration um, that whatever the source of the ideas, when they come together into the band. 
they get absorbed into our sort of collective absolutely band yeah. brain if you like and it becomes hard to identify where the bits come from because we're also sort of singular about making it an mm. ensemble yeah. approach yeah, it's interesting guys it's <laughs> interesting as you said that because you know honestly you know obviously I've, I've dealt after you know the band with lots of other bands and we were a true band a band that, a real band that that were friends and we were really we, we 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 toured together we there was no separate planes or separate boats or separate cars or or or, or buses we were we were a true band in the real sense and and that says a lot because i think it shows in both recording and on stage we were we were a band of players and and what you know it, it's 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 not trite it's it's a reality and i think that um, having you know seen other bands that you know, that go you know, that live in one place or live in another and they get together rehearsals and and back and backstage they'll call each other names oh he's an idiot uh, you know hope he go etc we were a, a, we were friends I mean we God we lived we lived together for God's sake <laughs> I mean you know not living together in a in a no. the sense of uh, you know but we lived in different apartments and places in Portsmouth, of all places. <laughs> you know, so uh, well, no, we were a true band. And that's something that I think um, comes out in the music and in who we are and who we I were. I think so. I've always... I've, Do you feel... Sorry, go ahead, Anthony. Uh, do you feel there was a turning point at which you realized this? Or is this just looking back in retrospect? I, I don't think I thought about it at the time. Uh, it was. It just seemed like the natural order of things for us all to be doing that at the time. We, Derek and I, used to go bait digging together. We go fishing together. You know, rent a boat and row out into the Solent and, <laughs> in stage clothes, kind of. You know, <laughs> fishing, and yeah, we do all. You know, we just did regular things that regular guys do who were friends, and we were always like, around each other's houses, always out going for a drink, going for a curry. We were, but I don't know, that was always what my idea of what a band is supposed to be. You do these things together and yeah. you have these shared experiences which then translate themselves into the cohesion that is the band, that gives voice to that spirit in the, in the music. Mm. Yeah, you guys is exactly correct. I, I th that's what that's what I felt that the band was about, and I think that separated us from most of the other bands that that were around at that time. And even in retrospect, um, I think it, it shows up in what what we left as a what our legacy is, and yeah, and the music we left, and certainly interview is part of that. Um, I think it's a it's a real part of why it has endured where the music of, of many other very talented bands of the era has it. Well, it's a combination of just the brilliance of the music itself, but also the 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 energy in which it was presented. And you can hear it on the recordings, and you can certainly see it in the uh, in the, the live uh, taped performances. And But you can hear it in, like, in just the same, the, the interaction between the Gary and Kerry in the, in the guitar and, and keyboard interlocking parts that that developed into another thing from the original recorded version and then you listen to the live version and they're just throwing the notes back and forth in yeah. this really playful way yeah. and it sounds fun you have to smile when you hear it it's I, I like that example I think, too I, I think that's exactly correct you know we would try to kind yeah. of out smart each other if you like it's like where that anticipation is <laughs> going to come is he he's, he's i'm going to throw him here you know but it was all yeah. still like behind and supporting the band or the, the, the tune so yeah i think there's also we we trusted each other and that's another thing a matter we you know it was there was a lot a lot of trust with individual individual members i mean we all we all leaned on each other and trusted each other uh, musically and, per, and personally so yeah. that was all part and parcel of what who we were i know so, sometimes when we were playing live and there'd be some, some I'd hear something that wasn't right and I could like 
sort of look sideways to Ray, and he would he would know that what I, you know he had heard what I'd heard, but he wasn't gonna like give it up for the audience to re- recognize that we knew something was wrong. But he would sort of he'd make this sort of facial movement, and like I'd know. <laughs> <laughs> what was going on? But he he would always be on that. Guys, I, 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 I've seen a video, I can't remember which one it was, where I think either I was do I, I sang a note like wrong or in the wrong place or, or a jaw or something and I saw I saw you look at Ray and, and then I, I just saw Ray's eyebrows move up and there was a smirk. <laughs> we moved on. And but uh, yeah, I you're right, I remember it was it's something. Somebody did something. It was a kind of a, a little mistake somewhere, and uh, yeah, you you turned to Ray and Ray smirked. Yeah, it's just sort of the, these you know affirmation looks. You know when we <laughs> very very yeah. funny. Yeah, dear Raymond. Well, this is a beautiful time, and uh, really grateful for all of you giving so much of it. Um, I think the only questions I've got left are, will there be remixes of the rest of the catalog? Or is that in, in plan? And then uh, is there anything special about the physical release of this, this album uh, interview you know, with this remix? Derek, I'm assuming you know all those details. Well, there's uh, obviously a 5.1. Okay, I've got, I'm the one that has to explain. Yeah, there's a 5.1 uh um you know uh surround sound mix uh and with some great graphics as well i mean superb uh there's an atmos mix there's a flat mix there's an instrumental mix and there's going to be um <clears throat> uh, limited edition uh lp vinyl lps um light sky blue um etc um and um yes there are plans to have other uh albums mixed remixed uh, by Stephen. in fact the missing piece has been done and it's going to be authored uh you know unfortunately not by ray because um he's no longer with us and you know we all we all here are very you know sad that he's not um so that's hopefully will come out towards the end of the year if if not early next year and um you know, I, I, I think that uh, perhaps there's another one or two albums that Stephen might want to have a go at. I mean, I think I, I think Playing the Fool would be a good one. Yeah, I've thought that in the part. We have That's those fun. tapes too, don't we? I'm, yeah. yeah I'm I, not sure. Not sure. Oh, not sure? Not okay. sure. Did you go over them? It's a long time. Kerry's <laughs> the keeper of the tape, so... Let's 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 hand the uh, mic back to him. Are the tapes? Do we have those tapes? Well, I've still got all the tapes I had, but I'm not sure how complete they are. And because because was... I haven't I haven't got a tape player anymore, so I haven't been able to check them to see what we've got. Well, it was four shows. Uh, where it was a combination. Four, of four, four, games, four yeah. shows. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of tape there. I've still got what I've had. Um, well. I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, we well, know it would be it would be nice to hear whatever's on those tapes, whether it's the album recordings. We know that Dan Bornemark sure, has sort of... a whole bunch of that because he had remixed quite a bunch of the sort of other alternative live shows that came out on uh, something or other. Oh, they were in that box, yes, the box set. Yeah, right. So there is those. Yeah. But my question is: Do we know what happened to the tapes of acquiring the taste? I would like to hear that I remix. Think... No, I, I, I think Kerry, uh, we, we looked uh, in, in the vaults. We found the first album, but there's only about three songs from Acquiring the Taste that was found. Uh, the one that obviously I, I would love to, everyone, I think, well, Stephen wanted to do initially way, way back was um, uh, in a glass house. In a glass yeah. house yeah. Mm. And that's the one where I think I, I personally think would be the best boy. That would be a wonderful album to remix. And those yes. tapes, those tapes can't be found. No, no, I, no one knows anything about them. And boy, I, I, if, it, if it would be so great to have those that album remix because that was a big, big turning point for all of us here. You know, and, and 
and a great, a really great album yeah. as well. You know, on in retrospect, it's um, a spectacular album, and and it has a sound world which is unique to itself, which is very special. But it would be very interesting to take a, a different look. Song yeah, at, that, at the, oh, the that songs. that one I would love to have mm. remixed. That 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 one especially more than any any other album we have. But mm. no one can find the uh, the multis. Anyone out there? You know, let us know. We we'll, we'll give you a reward of uh, ten dollars. <laughs> well, Five. of course, <laughs> you could well, now. I, I, I uh, think you could now pull the uh, the stereo master apart and do what they did with like the Beatles get back yeah. and uh, more and revolver mm -hmm. where they're going into mono tracks practically and and tearing stuff out of them. So mm -hmm. technologically, possibilities do exist. I know it's not ideal, but it's it's a start. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, John. Oh, I was just going to say that uh, Pat Meehan probably had a ritual bonfire of uh, uh, of the master of, of, of the, uh, and, and pictures of us too. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. While counting his ninety thousand dollars, that was, a, that was uh, the, the the manager, uh, 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 our, our man, or so called manager who. Uh, Basically, um, careful. Uh, how can I put this? Was um, not exactly the most uh, trustworthy person in the world, um, and uh, you know the one who basically owns Black Sabbath um, houses and, and and everything else. I mean, uh, he was our first man, first real manager, and and you know I found out that uh, me and Phil at that point um, found out that. Um, the monies that he got from Columbia Records were didn't come into the band's pocket. Um, they went to their pocket. So uh, we, we kind of blew the whistle and Black Sabbath and Edgar Broughton and can't remember who else was on the roster, uh, you know, found out. Yes, of course, as well. Um, yeah, so you're right, John. Probably it was, <laughs> we were the first to be blown up. <laughs> uh, I'm telling tales out of school here. <laughs> Um, anyway, so that's that's uh, yeah. I wish wish I wish we could find the tapes. It would be great to have that remixed. Totally yeah, agree. That's the it, album I was introduced was, to Gentle Giant for. It was on WWA, you see. Uh, so where, where the that? master tapes went, we we don't know. Is it, have efforts been made to uh, to trace their journey? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's been searches. <clears throat> Wasn't they had uh, yeah, and searches it, everywhere, and then we, no one's come up with any uh, you know solutions. If they're hiding somewhere, you know, please let let us know, and and you know, we you know, we'll we'll give a guy a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> there was that huge fire. Oh, wasn't generous fire. as ever. You, <laughs> that, that huge universal warehouse fire out in California. It could have years been, well, but years that, ago. that's in, in North America. So I mean, there was a, probably a copy sent. Um, well, actually, there was a copy sent to Columbia, who turned it down, right? Because they thought it was not commercial. In fact, so um, they didn't even release the, the album. Um, so I'm not so sure. So that, that copy might be in a Columbia vault somewhere. We've, we've, I've looked, well, Columbia, that Sony, that would be Sony, and I, I, I've had people search in there. Um, okay. And, and that was no, probably a stereo master you sent them anyway. Yeah, yeah correct. Not, not, yeah, not the Maltese. Yeah. It's in the UK somewhere, so you guys in the, in the UK, you, you go, you know, <laughs> still hunt for it. Uh, but yeah, that, we, that was, so we have a missing piece, um, and uh, I'd love the, uh, the live album, and, 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 and in a glass house, that would be uh, my choice. It's not Giant for a Day particularly. Uh, how did you... I can't quite remember how you got that that whirling organ thing. Was it switching the C3 on and off? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's, you know what, John? John I, I was thinking the same thing. I, I thought, how, how, did we, how did we do that? You know, it was... I can't remember. Take I know. It, it, Is that what you think, Harry? You you could get that effect if you had an M, uh, a hammered M. You could hold a chord, switch it off, and it would just grow or die. 
Yeah. That's it. That's the principle. It was exactly the same principle, I think. Did all the Hammonds do that, Mike? Do you know? Well, I remember doing it with a B3 when you when you, you turn yeah. the motor on and off and, and you can make that yeah. happen. I think the B and the C were very similar, weren't they, in this truck? It's a double mm -hmm. switch. Yeah, that's thing, how it was it? done. So it was a fresh. It took quite a long time because you had to keep waiting for the every one to fire up, so I could do it again. You could only do it yeah, one yeah. at a time, right? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's that's it, that's it, commitment. Because <laughs> it happens effect. a lot. <laughs> yeah. So the, okay, the sound that I was I'm always curious about on that song is it sounds like someone running their thumb down a comb. Uh, oh, yeah. It's just, yeah, with that, brrr, or, you know, or it's brrr, as, it, I'm sure it's a keyboard, but I, I couldn't identify what it was. I thought it was a xylophone. Oh. Sounds like Kerry stumbling oh. down a xylophone. It sounds oh, like damper, like more muted than that. Maybe you know, like it maybe had a towel on it or something. <laughs> Could it have been a clav? That, that's what I was thinking. Maybe a, yeah, a muted I, I, setting I, I, on a clav. I think it was a clav. Yeah. From what I remember. Yeah. Yeah. 